ध्यान से Good morning, everyone. The topic for uh, today's seminar is domestic violence and psychiatry. One of the biggest threats to public violence is interpersonal. Uh, one of the biggest threats to public health is interpersonal violence. Now, this interpersonal violence comes in many forms, including assault, rape, domestic violence, torture, and homicide. Domestic violence is a behavior pattern in which a person repeatedly inflicts physical injury, pain, fear, or mental anguish on another member of the household. The intent could be to gain power or control. Abuse may be through physical, psychological, sexual, or economic means. This abuse can be directed towards children, elders, or partners. Violence directed at a partner by a current or former partner or spouse is known as intimate partner violence. This includes sexual or physical violence, psychological aggression, and stalking. Declared as a public health epidemic by WHO, it continues to afflict more than one third of the women globally. Domestic violence may be perpetrated by either sex. Women invariably uh, are the victims in majority of the cases, especially the more conservative societies. Husband abuse is also reported, but uh, husband abuse is more likely to occur when a frail elderly man is married to a much younger woman. But it is very much less reported. Why? Fearing ridicule if they expose the problem, fearing charges of counter assault, being unable to leave the situation because of financial difficulties. Now, child abuse involves emotional, sexual, physical, or neglect of a child under the age of 18 by a parent, custodian, or caregiver that results in potential harm or a threat of harm. Elder abuse is a failure. Thank <laughs> you. 
so we were talking about the power and control wheel this is a helpful tool and it helps us in understanding the overall pattern of abusive and violent behaviors which are used by an abuser to establish and maintain control over his or her partner or any other victim in the household this could be by coerce, uh, coercion or threat intimidation emotional abuse isolation minimizing denying uh, and blaming using the children economic abuse or even male privilege now another factor that has come into light is gaslighting gaslighting is derived from the 1938 melodrama gaslight a play in which an older husband sets out to drive his wife to madness it is related to the psychological abuse that was applied in a marital or intimate relationship and it involves a varying cluster of manipulations used to undermine an intended target person's rea uh, person's reality and mental stability let's talk about the categories of domestic abuse firstly physical abuse it could be a high severity or a low severity abuse now in high severity we have been threatened or hurt with a weapon being burned choked hit or kicked resulting in broken bones and head or internal injuries low severity abuse includes being slapped hit or kicked without injury this could include but this could include bruising minor cuts and even sprains emotional abuse this involves undermining a person's sense of self worth through constant criticism belittling one's abilities like name calling damaging a partner's relationship with the children not letting a partner see his or her friends and family sexual abuse involves forcing a partner to take part in a sex act when the partner does not consent psychological abuse this involves causing fear by intimidation threatening physical harm to self partner or children destruction of pets and property forcing isolation from friends family school and or work financial or economic abuse making or attempting to make a person financially dependent maintaining total con uh, total control over financial resources now withholding access to money and or forbidding attendance at school or work let's talk about the prevalence uh, firstly worldwide estimate uh, states that one in every 3 women has experienced some form of physical or sexual abuse from a domestic partner the national crime reports bureau has reported that cases of domestic violence are the most prevalent form of crimes against women in india 49% including high severity violence and 51% are low severity violence reported rates of domestic violence against indian women range between 40% and 83% who reports that worldwide child maltreatment is widespread with one in four adults reporting being physically abused as children india being home to 19% of the world's children it is estimated that every second child is abused to sexual uh, is exposed to sexual abuse and violence and globally the overall, overall prevalence of elder abuse is 15.7% the prevalence rate in india is about 14% let's talk about the risk factors the risk factors include individual uh, relationship community and societal issues firstly the individual risk factors a history of childhood abuse or of witnessing violence in the home being in a vulnerable situation such as being a very young parent sexist attitudes about the role of men and women substance and uh, abuse most likely alcohol and crack cocaine and even gambling family risk factors severe family dependence or disempowerment families that rely on social welfare systems for example the government for financial support may be at an increased risk families with a parental incapacity for example psychological or intellectual parental illness a uh, control of wealth and decision making within the family centered on only one partner most often the male and both caregivers could be uh, could abuse substances of any kind then the community risk factors the lack of inclusive and nurturing communities these communities limit opportunities for intervention and transmission of non violent norms of behavior this could also contribute to isolation and lack of social support for family members peer groups in which violence is a norm and barriers that limit community participation for example poverty cultural alienation and racism societal risk factors acceptance of violence as a means to settle disputes especially interpersonal disputes reinforcement and glamorization of violence such as through television video gaming etc tolerance of physical punishment of women and children 
lack of effective sanctions against violence within families rigidly defined and enforced gender rules and norms acceptance of masculinity as akin to toughness and dominance tolerance for the idea of ownership of women or that parents have ownership of children barriers to independence participation self fulfillment dignity and resulting social isolation again this could also lead to low self esteem cultural norms about women's primarily role as family caregivers and a lack of funding for family violence prevention programs other risk factors there has uh, been seen that an inverse relationship between education and domestic violence is present married indian women who have completed high school experience lower rates of domestic violence than those who have not completed elementary school high school or received no education at all indian women with education levels equal to their husband experience lower rates of victimization 23% than those with less education than their spouse which is 36% now pregnancy is another high risk period for battery and it has been seen that 15 to 25% pregnant women are abused this abuse often results in birth defects and it is associated with low birth weight pregnancy complication and it also impacts the overall well being of the mother and the child now another thing that came to light was covid 19 or a pandemic it came out to be as a risk factor as multiple reports suggested that measures like lockdown increased the incidence of uh, domestic violence not also uh, not just in number but also in severity it was found that uh, layoffs loss of income extended domestic stays and exposure to habits like stay at home orders drove up this incidence due to restrictions imposed on physical distance domestic violence increased consistent with the understanding that domestic violence goes up whenever families spend more time together such as christmas or summer vacations even if a family did not have a prior history of abuse economic distress during a pandemic due to financial constraints and a lack of social support fueled it now high stress levels among couples also increased the rate to up to 3.5% and scholars have again suggested that low income was also related to an increase in the incidence let's talk about the impact firstly the, the physical impact this could lead to injury disability chronic health problems like irritable bowel syndrome uh, gi disorders various chronic pain syndromes hypertension etc sexual and reproductive health problems like contracting stds spread of hiv aids and high risk pregnancies and ultimately even death the psychological impact effects can be both direct and indirect direct effects could be anxiety fear mistrust of others inability to concentrate loneliness post traumatic stress disorder depression and even suicide then indirect effects could be psychosomatic illnesses withdrawal drug uh, alcohol or even drug use it has also been known that as they develop children and teens who grow up with domestic violence in the household are more likely to use violence at school or community more likely to attempt suicide more likely to use drugs more likely to commit crimes especially sexual assault more likely to use violence to enhance their reputation and self esteem and they are also more likely to become abusers in later life it also has economic and social impact for example rejection and social stigma at a community level reduced ability to participate in social and economic activities acute fear of future violence damage to women's confidence resulting in fear of venturing into public places increased vulnerability to other types of gender based violence job loss due to absenteeism negative impact on women's income generating power and it is also known in india one incident of violence translates into women losing about seven working days the impact on family and dependence it could lead to divorce broken families it jeopardizes a family's economic and emotional development and also a loss of faith and trust in the institution of family now it also has certain impact on the perpetrators who are causing this abuse they could be facing arrest imprisonment legal restrictions on facing their uh, seeing their families divorce again break up of their families feeling of alienation from their families and minimizing the significance of violence for which they are responsible for like deflecting the responsibility for violence onto their partner and failure to associate it with their relationship this also has certain impact on the uh, society 
it increases the burden on health and judicial system hindrance to economic stability and growth hindrance to women's participation in developmental processes and lessening of their contribution constrained ability of women to respond to rapid social political or economic change and weakened so, uh, support networks on which people's survival strategies depend now there are uh, what do we uh, as healthcare providers need to know when it comes to an assessment there are certain guiding principles like firstly we have to treat the patient with respect dignity compassion with sensitivity to age culture social situation by also recognizing at the same time that domestic violence is unacceptable in any relationship uh, we have to make an attempt to engage patients in long term care within the available healthcare system to help them to attain greater safety and control in their lives and regard the safety of the victims as well as their children and we have to recognize this as the main priority there are certain do's and don'ts that we have to keep in mind when assessing a patient of domestic violence make screening for domestic violence as part of assessment for all assess the nature causes context and impact ask gender neutral but specific terms example hurt hit or choke establish strong, uh, strong therapeutic relationship um, follow up should be recommended ask for connecting with supporting resources ask for any other family member if they also require assistance and acknowledge their uh, acknowledge for the confidence and non disclosure then don't don't mix with other screening checklists don't force them to disclose about their problems don't confront with direct eye contact when screening don't abruptly end the assessment without ensuring their safety don't conduct duplicate assessment don't refer to unsustainable or ineffective support system don't assume all to have the same psychological or social needs and don't ignore the sensitive cultural and gender norms multiple evaluations need to be done firstly physical examination followed by a mental health or psychiatric evaluation including substance abuse evaluation and also sexual deviancy evaluation in case of interpersonal uh, violence then uh, when it comes to screening we have to keep in mind the acronym radar which summarizes r for remember to ask routinely about partner violence in your own practice ask directly about violence document the information and assess your patient's safety now it is also uh, we should also know which patients to screen all the patients who present with symptoms or signs of uh, domestic violence like multiple injuries in various stages of healing then children who present with symptoms or signs of domestic violence patients with history of substance abuse by themselves or their partners patients with eating disorders conversion disorders chronic pain syndromes or prior history of such trauma in case of an acute incident uh, history and physical examination uh, a proper history followed by a proper physical examination should be recorded then we should also remember that we should ask them if you return to your home will you be in immediate physical danger do you have a safe place to go what type of assistance would you like from us are you having any suicidal thoughts these are a few questions that we need to remember for asking in case of an immediate risk now management and intervention after the uh, safety of the patient has been ensured an initial evaluation complete there are various psychological interventions which can help these patients trauma focused cbt this uh, model includes psychoeducation about ptsd and stress management then helping to overcome ptsd through empowerment this involves 9 to 12 sessions of 60 to 90 minute each conducted two times per week for 8 weeks then complex trauma treatment approach uh, other uh, Uh, psychological interventions uh, behavior therapy behavior modification third wave cbt psychodynamic therapies humanistic therapies integ uh, integrative therapies and other interventions like art therapy meditation music etc what are the legal responses to domestic abuse the laws in india that deal with uh, domestic violence are the dowry prohibition act of 1961 the uh, section 498 a of the ipc and protection of women from domestic violence act 2005 it is important that the women know about their rights then also uh, other laws protecting women from domestic violence are the hindu succession act equal remuneration act law against sexual harassment at workplace in conclusion i would like to add that an effective response to violence must be multi sectorial 
there needs to be an immediate addressing uh, of the practical needs of women experiencing abuse as well as other victims. The long-term uh, follow-up and assistance needs to be provided, focusing on changing those cultural norms, attitudes, and legal provisions that promote the acceptance of and even encourage violence against women and undermine women's enjoyment of their full human rights and freedom. A desire for more proactive and targeted approaches to manage the risk posed from perpetrators of domestic abuse needs uh, is the need of the hour. These are a few helpline numbers that need to be provided to the victims of the domestic abuse. These are my references. This brings me to the end of my seminar. Thank you. When any question could be put out? Domestic violence in context of psychiatric patients. Like with the patient, patient like public violence in type of age or age. Or the patient, patient also can be physically no use because of the So in that context, what do you think should be the role of the psychiatrist? Where do you see that? You know, in cases, certainly you see many of the patients are given up since by their family members. And on the contrary, you also see that many of the patients who have So, in case of alcohol abuse, so we have seen a lot of patients who have similar complaints. So, the perpetrators also, after giving them the appropriate management for alcohol. They also need to have the uh, counseling therapy in which they are told about family traditions to the family, in which they are told about such norms and uh, uh, about such activities that they are interacting with. In this seminar, where do you, do you think of what changes should we make in our approach? Should we do something? When you see violence. If the patient is abused or if the patient is himself or herself, say the patient is abusing his spouse. Yes. Okay. What difference do you see? Do you see any difference? Difference in approach. We can't do this go to the media reaction that there is violence. There are certain contexts. So we need to first ask. We should have built that picture similar. Right? Okay. So we may not be able to just think of it right now. Yes. Okay. But when uh, say a person is doing it as a part of the investment, then basic thing is both like counseling the caregiver. Okay. Because your she has face to be, regardless of what is the condition of the uh, of the patient. So we need to take care of that caregiver also as a patient. Who has faced domestic violence, is taking case in under so whatever you have said here, you need to. So that also treatment of the disorder. Yes. Second thing is like uh, many family members they get frustrated and uh, they start abusing the patient yes. because of this condition. Yes. So again, you need to uh, say address the patient who has faced the abuse and also counsel them that this is not certainly going to help in minimizing the behavior impact. Express the emotion through the violence in the form of the past, you can say. Yes. 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 Any concern or question you really wish to invite? We have understood everything about the rest of the world. When do you think we need to support psychiatrists? Or psychologists, like when we get abuse or domestic violence, when you think a psychiatrist is okay for it or not? So, ma'am, if the patient comes seeking help, that is when we should give them the choice of what they would like as the management treatment option, whether they would like to go for the therapy or whether they would like any medication for it. But as an initial, you're you're somebody who knows better about the patient. Concerns, right? Yes. So, when to involve the psychiatrist, as in, when do you suggest that the psychiatrist is needed or the psychiatrist medicine or the 
simple terms like for example an abuser will uh, blame the victim herself that uh, he, matlab, it was right matlab, you deserve this beating or you deserve this kind of battery it is your fault that i am behaving like this with you and eventually the victim starts, starts to believe right the gaslighting is when there is psychological manipulation that eventually leads to the uh, you know victim believing Break that barrier and get out of it. 
तो इमोशनल डिपेंडेंस ज्यादा है मेजर ऑब्सटेकल और हर्डल्स इन आर कल्चर इज दिस और कल्चरल यू नो बिलीव सिस्टम वेन द रूट इज वेरी मच वेरी मच वीक अबाउट द अबाउट द पावर अबाउट वॉट अ मैन कैन गेट अब वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर देम टू अंडरस्टैंड हस टू मेक दैन अंडरस्टैंड हाउ टू गो अबाउट इट एंड वॉट टू गो अबाउट इट इट इज गोइंग टू गो टू द अथॉरिटी टू नीड देयर परमिशन टू नीड द फैमिलीज परमिशन otherwise it will not make any difference even if you go out there you talk about it they deny it so nothing is so if you need to make the victim or the family members understand about the legal barrier of protection as as well as the mental health issues that is other concern and make, let them help make them help, you know make them decide what they can do there but we cannot do anything until our they let them they let you Anything else? The short question.
if a child is abused there or a program where the child will be taken from the uh, parents. So financial support, if a female is being say abused, she is not financially independent, but they have support, there is financial support, there is you can say uh, social welfare departments who take care of that spouse. We don't have that. So as a psychiatrist you are stuck, what to do? How do you support that patient? Right? And that is why they are Financially and emotionally also different. And there is a lot of learning because we are like the females are also part of the culture. So there is a set of women who think that it is okay for husband. You know, sometimes it's okay. And there, if you're trying to counsel the husband and say, why are you trying to instigate my wife? She was okay with it for the last uh, 10 years. Now she has come to you and now you're telling her now she's, you know, favor of that depression capability. In fact, another chukrati up to therapy as well. So that, that is, so but you have to, you know, you have to do your part. And in many rare cases, many cases, if there is a, you can say malfunctioning couple, the uh, one partner is, you can say, anxious dependent, the other is narcissistic. They are, they are okay with the violent abuse. They will not accept, even the abuser will not accept that, okay, it's okay, I'm okay. That is something you can say morally also with what we should do. But whether, like the spouse is okay with that. Okay, what do we do in that context? That is a big question. But we need to be, uh, you can say, sensitive to this aspect. And at least have some also mechanism where we can, uh, in, you know, build in our interventions that we have some aspect where we at least do something. Okay, see if the Battered or abused person is okay. Just I think by asking her and taking care and telling her that this also is something that needs treatment assessment. That is, okay. and I think any any incident that needs to be, you know, uh, say, addressed by a psychologist, counselor, also, because if it has come to violence, then definitely something. One, I'm really happy thought that in the area, we 
Thank you. 